This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. So let's go through and look at financial assets. So a financial asset arises when we either go through and purchase another business's equity. So therefore, we have an investment within another entity going back to the definitions that we had previously and then also financial assets are looking at an investment in debt because if you invest in another person's debt so effectively you are the lender of the cash uh, so you are the bank or the financial institution then effectively what happens there is that you now have the contractual right to receive those cash flows so you are contractually obliged to receive the interest and you are contractually obliged to receive the principal that you lent in the first place. Okay, So it's all about how we account for the investment in shares and how we account for the investment in debt. Now, when we look at financial assets, there are effectively two ways in which we go through and look at your financial assets. Uh, they are either measured at fair value or they are either measured at amortised cost. Now, what we need to go through and do is we need to look at the separate stages. We need to look at the initial measurement of your investment in debt or your investment in shares. Uh, we then need to go through as well and look at how we subsequently measure it. So how do we then treat it based on fair value, where the gains and losses go? Is it to profit or loss? Is it to other comprehensive income? And how we go through then and look at this amortised cost methodology. Once we've looked at initial, once we've looked at subsequent, we then start to look at derecognition and what happens then if we decide to sell our investment in debt or sell our investment in shares. From a numbers perspective, uh, you're likely to see that there within the groups question. From a discursive aspect, you're likely to go through there and see it within the focus or the mix style question. OK, uh, so let's go through, have a look at it. First of all, in terms of your is it initial measurement? So when you initially buy your investment in debt or buy your investment in shares, you credit the bank, debit your financial asset, don't we? OK, uh, so when you initially recognise it, we look at there, don't we, at based upon your fair value. So in essence, what you have paid to buy the shares and what you have paid to buy the debt, what funds have you provided uh, to the borrower? OK, uh, just note we add on any transaction costs. So we include transaction costs. So you with your transaction costs, credit bank and debit the financial asset as well. Don't take it to profit or loss unless uh, we have a financial asset that is classified as what we see as fair value through profit or loss. We shall see that in a moment, but fair value through profit or loss, uh, any transaction costs go immediately to profit or loss. They are not added to the value of the financial assets. We then go through there and start to look at your subsequent measurement. And subsequent measurement depends upon how you have initially classified that asset. As we said, there are two ways of measuring it, either fair value or your amortised cost. So what we've got there, if you think about your financial assets and your investment in equity, your investment in shares, what you have here is you have to classify it as default as fair value through profit or loss or FVTPL. OK, so fair value through profit or loss. OK, that's the default option. So if you have an investment in shares, you have to go through there and classify it at fair value through profit or loss, which is very, very literal, isn't it? Uh, because if that's the case, you remeasure it to fair value at the reporting date and gains and losses there go through profit or loss. OK, happy with that? Nice and straightforward, isn't it? Uh, however, just be careful. You then have the option to uh, initial recognition when you purchase the shares to classify it differently. It has to be done at the initial recognition stage. It's not something you can chop and change uh, as the investment goes up or down in value. Okay. What you can go through and do there is you can classify your investment in shares as fair value through other comprehensive income. Again, that's quite literal, isn't it? 
you remeasure it to fair value every reporting date and gains and losses go through OCI. Okay. Just be aware if you are to classify it as fair value through OCI, you need to have the strategic intent to go through there and show that you are going to hold that asset. It's not there for trading purposes in the short term. You are going to go through there and keep it for the long term and therefore you accumulate those gains and losses within other comprehensive income. On subsequent disposal of that investment in shares that is measured at fair value through OCI, what you will go through and do there is that any gains or losses that have been stored up within other comprehensive income uh, are reclassified or, or transferred to your retained earnings as a reserve transfer. So when you classify it as other comprehensive income, it's in that other comprehensive income section, which is not reclassified through profit or loss. So we don't take the accumulated gains in OCI and move them up to profit or loss when it is disposed of. We do a reserve transfer within your statement of change in equity. But that's just going a little bit too far. I apologise, but it's, it's worthwhile noting. So if we're looking at, is it there, your investment in shares, you have fair value through profit or loss, default, fair value through OCI if you have strategic intent, and just be aware that the transaction costs on fair value through profit or loss go through profit or loss, but any transaction costs are added on top of the initial amount recognised if it is classified as fair value through OCI. Happy with that? Yeah, it make, makes a bit of sense, doesn't it? Okay. Uh, so investments in equity shares are, are reasonably straightforward, or at least they should be. OK, uh, just note with your fair value through OCI, uh, any dividends received still go through profit or loss. OK, we don't take any dividends received uh, into your other components of equity or other comprehensive income. Dividends received on the both fair value through profit or loss and fair value through OCI go to profit or loss. OK. Investment in debt. Okay, investment in debt is just a little bit tricky. I don't think maybe the, the notes that I put there give it enough gravitas. But what you've got there is any investment in debt most of the time is going to be classified at, at amortised cost. Uh, however, amortised cost uh, has to fulfil two criteria. Again, you've seen this in your earlier studies at F7. You've got the the business model test okay so remember there there needs to be intent to hold the asset until its maturity date okay there also needs to be is it your contractual cash flow test okay so there you've got your contractual cash receipts so being the interest the coupon rate of interest and also the receiving the principal okay key bit is if your intention is to hold it until maturity then it is then at amortised cost. Okay. However, just be very, very careful. In terms of recent updates of the B into IFRS 9, technically now what we have is, is that the default treatment for your investment in debt is actually fair value through other comprehensive income. Okay. Uh, but if you intend to hold it to maturity, it's classified at amortised cost. Okay. Because just be careful because you might actually go through and buy an entity's debt get the contractual cash flows so you are meeting the contractual cash flow test but you're not aiming to hold the asset until its maturity date okay you're intending to sell it at some point in time to take the funds and maybe invest it in some further debt that has maybe a better return on the investment that you've made and it's there whereby you fulfill the contractual cash flow test but on the business model test you get the cash flow in terms of the interest and the coupon rate, but your intention is actually to sell the asset. If that's the case, it will be there classified as fair value through other comprehensive income. Okay. Uh, again, there is also the fair value option, which again is just a little bit tricky. It adds more complication. I apologise because financial instruments is complicated as it is. But when you look there, you might have an investment in debt that you intend to sell and is therefore fair value through other comprehensive income. 
but if you have a similar liability that is at fair value through profit or loss, then you have an accounting mismatch. Okay, uh, so that fair value through profit or loss financial liability is very similar in terms of its characteristics to your investment in debt. If that's the case, we have the option to turn that fair value through OCI investment and debt into fair value through profit or loss. Okay, but again, possibly going just a bit too far. But that, that that's that's up to you. Okay, have a read of the the detailed text to give yourself a more thorough understanding. Again, I'm just going to cover the basics of all of your financial assets, financial liabilities, and, and the rest. Okay. Uh, De-recognition, very simple. Uh, once you have sold the financial asset, uh, once you no longer have the contractual rights to receive the cash flows, then you de-recognize that financial asset. So remove it from the statement of financial position. You recognize any difference between the proceeds and the carrying value as a profit or loss on disposal. And then just be aware that any gains or losses that you had, was it there from your investment in equity that have been stored up in OCI? They are transferred, aren't they, as a reserve transfer from OCI through to profit or loss within your statement of changes in equity. OK, there we go. If we go through and have a play around with the example okay so you've got an example there is it about your financial assets three situations that you have uh, and for each of them it wants us to do a little bit of explaining how each of the above financial assets will be accounted for in the financial statement so again when you're thinking about your financial statements we're thinking statement of financial position statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income you're thinking about your statement of change in equity. Uh, you're thinking about your statement of cash flows. OK, uh, don't neglect your cash flows. So what, what have we got? OK, uh, first scenario there says Norman bought 100,000 shares in a listed entity so that there will be a fair value on the 1st of November 2015. Uh, each share costs $5 to purchase. We have a fee of 25 cents, so that's your transaction cost. Uh, the fair value at December 2015, which we assume is the reporting date, was $3.50. Okay, so, so there, if I'm thinking about my in, initial recognition, I'm going to capitalise it at fair value. The transaction costs, where do they go? It depends upon the classification, doesn't it? Well, here, the default... Is fair value through profit or loss, isn't it? So therefore, those transaction costs will be expensed through profit or loss, won't they? Okay. Which is ever so slightly different when you, when you look at the second scenario, because here, uh, Norman bought 200,000 shares in a listed entity, uh, 500,000 in current transaction costs. Uh, key bit there is that you've got a long-term strategy to realise the gains in the future. So here you could make the option to go through there and classify it as fair value through OCI, couldn't we? Okay, because you have the strategic intent to hold the asset uh, for, for longer than just the, the current period. Okay, uh, so that's the case. The big difference there is that you are going to go through and capitalise the transaction costs. Okay. Uh, we'll just leave the third one for the time being. Let's go through there and just take some notes. Make sure that you're happy with the various bits and pieces. Uh, so you've got there the first one. Is it the fair value through profit or loss? Again, explain why it is the fair value through profit or loss. The reason why is because it is the default category, isn't it? Okay. If you have an investment in shares, that is the default. Okay. Uh, so what I would go through and do that is that I would think about my initial recognition. Uh, so initially, we're going to recognize it. Is it at, I think, $500,000 on the statement of financial position? Let me just check. Yeah, $5. Excellent, $100 thousand shares so even i can do that one in my head my limited 
level of mathematical ability. So $500,000 in a statement of financial position, if you wanted to. Uh, there will also, as well, be an outflow. Uh, there will be an outflow on the statement of cash flows. Uh, and again, that outflow... will be in your investing activities, won't it? Okay. Uh, don't forget, initially as well, as it is fair value through profit or loss, uh, there will also be, is it, I think, $25,000 recognised through the statement of profit or loss. Why is it recognised through the statement of profit or loss? Because it is a fair value through profit or loss financial asset okay excellent everyone happy with that okay so there's, there's, there's three things that i've extracted from the what's on the sfp what's in profit or loss and what's in the statement of cash flows uh then what have we got so that's initial uh we can then go through the and think about what happens subsequently again use headings it makes it easier to understand what you've written within your answer it says that at the end of the year, it was valued, was it, at $3.50, okay? So what you've got subsequently, uh, again, we need to think about what we have on the SFP. So at year end, I think is the $350,000 on the statement of financial position as a financial asset. Uh, probably in there as a current asset, isn't it? Because we're not intending to hold it strategically for the long term. Uh, and what you also have as well is that there is, I think, is it $150,000 loss in the statement of profit or loss because it was at five hundred. dollars it's now at 350, so a reduction of 150 on the statement of profit or loss. If you wanted to be clever, what you could say as well is that that is a non cash loss on the statement of cash flows, and then that there, that non cash on the statement of cash flows, if you wanted to, uh, would be adjusted, wouldn't it, uh, in your operating activities? If, if it has gone there uh, into your statement of profit or loss. Uh, it has not had any impact on cash, so that loss will be added back to, is it there, your profits before tax? Okay. Excellent. There we go. There's no, if you like, de-recognition because we've not yet sold it. Okay. Uh, second scenario is there, is it with your fair value through other comprehensive income? Again, why is it there's fair value through other comprehensive income, it's because we have the strategic intent to hold the asset for the long term. Okay, if that is the case, uh, <coughs> pardon me, we have gone through them, bought it for five hundred thousand, but there are transaction costs. Is it there of forty? So as it is fair value through OCI, we add those costs there, don't we, to the fair value? So. Initially, we have the, is it $540,000 on the SFP? Again, that 540 will be an outflow on the statement of cash flows. Uh, and will that be there once again? in my investing activities okay there we go there's nothing yet going through the through profit or loss okay uh it then goes on to tell us doesn't it uh the fair value of the shares at the reporting date was six hundred and twenty thousand at the 31st of december so if we go through there and look at it subsequently uh, then what we have there is it, I think, 620,000 
on the statement of financial position. Okay, the financial asset. Uh, then what we've got as well, don't forget, however, there is also now, let me see my maths. No, it's not going to desert me. Is there is $80,000. There is a gain, isn't there? There's an $80,000 gain. Now, this is where you need to be careful. That fair value through OCI financial asset will show the gain not through profit or loss but there is it through other comprehensive income if you want to be very specific that gain through other comprehensive income will be within the item or within the area that states that it is not reclassified okay it's not reclassified later on to profit or loss a reserve transfer will take it into your retained earnings. Uh, what we then have, it says that just after the end of the year, they were then sold, was it, for $650,000. We don't change the, the classification. Uh, there are rules, but we're, we're not too worried about changing the classification just now. Uh, here, just because it has been sold doesn't mean to say that we take it from fair value through OCI back to fair value through profit or loss. No. Okay, it still stays there as fair value through OCI. So what we have now is we have, is it your derecognition or to you and I disposal. Once we have disposed of it, we now no longer have the contractual rights to any cash flows. Uh, we have no right to any dividends. Uh, so therefore the asset has gone. So we de-recognize it, don't we? Uh, what we need to go through and do there is what is going to happen is first of all, it was sold, was it for 650? It was at 620. So there is a $30,000 profit, which goes on the statement of profit or loss. And what we have as well is that $80,000 is transferred to your retained earnings. And that transfer is done within your statement of changes in equity. Okay, so, so similar to when you have a gain on revaluation, any gains on revaluation go, or gains on revaluation of property, plant and equipment, I should say, gains on PPE go to OCI. Those gains go into OCI whereby it is not reclassified. So when you dispose of the PPE, you get a gain on disposal that goes in profit or loss. And then any gains held in reserve are transferred to retained earnings as a reserve transfer in the statement of changes in equity. Okay, there we go. Excellent. Happy with them? Sure. Good, good, good. Let's go through then and have a play around with the last little bit about your financial assets. Okay, so we have done, is it the first one? We have done the second one, the third one. The third one's different because you have investment in debt. Okay, you have bought 10,000 debentures. Okay, uh, you bought them at a discount on the par value of 100. So if it's a 2% discount, that means it is below par value. So is that there at $98 per debenture? Okay, and there's 10,000 of them. So do we initially recognize it at 980,000? Uh, if you have an investment in debt, uh, it's either fair value through OCI or amortized cost. Okay, it will be fair value through OCI if you have contractual cash flows, which, which we do here and we'll see in a moment. Uh, but if you then intend to sell the asset before its maturity date. Uh, here, the, the assumption okay, is that we are going to hold it to its maturity date. So therefore, it will be amortized cost. Okay, uh, there isn't any information about anything to do with fair value. Okay. Uh, so what do we have? Okay, uh, it tells us they're going to be redeemable in four years. 
uh, premium 5%, so that's 5% above the par value. So is that the uh, 105 per debenture? Uh, the coupon rate is there at 4%, so that 4% we will apply to the 100. And then let's look at the interest that we, or the coupon rate that we receive every year. And then the effective rate is there at 5.71. That's the important aspect uh, that we are going to apply in terms of the interest income that we receive in profit or loss. Okay, so uh, what have we got? Uh, we are going to go through there and look at this investment based upon your amortized cost, okay, because we meet the business model test, because we are going to hold the investment until its maturity date, and there are contractual cash flows, there is coupon interest, and we will hold it until the end of four years when we get a 5% premium, okay. Uh, similar to what you've seen in your previous studies, uh, we can go through there, can't we, and draw up your table. So we've got there is it year one. We've got our brought forward. Uh, we have our interest income, which remember is at I think five point seven one percent. You then have is it the cash received. And is it then the carry forward? Okay. Uh, the cash received is the is it at four percent? Four percent of the par value. Okay. Uh, so what have we got? Remember, uh, it was purchased at a discount of two percent, so ninety-eight dollars on the ten thousand. So does that give me is it nine eighty thousand? If you want journal entries, bleh, we'll give you them. But you are going to go through there, debit the financial asset, credit the bank. So on the SFP initially, it's at 980000 as a financial asset and as a cash outflow uh, as you've gone through there and purchased the investment in debt. Uh, interest income we apply to the outstanding amount receivable. 5.71 we apply. Is it there to the 980000 does that give me five five nine five eight? Okay. Uh, again, if you're looking at the journal entries, uh, that's money that is due to us. So we debit the financial asset and we credit the statement of profit or loss with our investment income. Okay, so we add the five five nine five eight to the nine eighty thousand. We then receive cash. So as we receive cash, that is a reduction in the value of the asset. Just be careful when you're looking at that figure there, the 4%. So that is 4% on the par value of 100. And there were 10,000 that we bought. Okay, so be very careful. It's not 4% of the, the opening figure, not 4% of that. 980,000. Okay. Again, uh, if we're looking at the cash received, you debit your bank and credit the financial asset. Okay. Excellent. Happy with that. Hopefully, you are. It's stuff you've seen previously from earlier financial reporting studies. Uh, and then what you've got, I think, is it 99. Careful. 995.958. And it's that figure there that then appears in the statement of financial position. You've got a gain there, a credit to the statement of profit or loss of your interest income. So you would adjust that accordingly as well with the statement of cash flows. And then you've got the debit to bank. So that's the cash that you have received in terms of interest received within your investing activities. Okay, excellent. Uh, what you can then go through and do, uh, you can go through then and carry that on for year two. So in year two, I'll let you do the maths. Uh, year three, just be aware that we have the same cash received every single year. 
and then in year four just be careful okay you get the 1090 thousand why everyone's blown away by that because what it should do it should come down to to nil at the end it doesn't because there's a little bit of rounding okay but this 1090 comes from the interest which is the is it at 40,000 uh, and then you've also got the is it the principal now just be careful the principal is at a 5% premium okay so 5% extra on a million so it's on the par is there at 50,000 okay so that's come there from is it five percent of the par which is a hundred and there were ten thousand there weren't there okay so you add that don't you uh to the initial million okay so you get an extra fifty thousand on top of the million okay excellent again as i said uh it, it doesn't come down exactly to zero there's a little bit of rounding i think it's a couple of hundred out who cares you are not going to have to do it to that extent within the exam okay you're just going to have to look have to look at the initial measurement and subsequent measurement and not for more than a year or two okay so there you go uh that's everything that you need to know about your financial assets uh, work it through, practice the questions. It can crop up in any question within the exam. Make sure you're on top of it. Uh, and if you do get stuck, feel free to go through there and ask on the forum. Other than that, I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.